romantic. What do you think of when you hear that word? What is the picture that fills your inner eye, the portrait that paints your sight? Name for your own self what mimetic image emerges most from your imagination. Is it bliss or mischief? What bombards your senses when romance slips outside the heart? When I say romantic, the photo that pops into your retina might be different, indeed very different than mine. So let's stop and suss it out together, tracing each projection cast for us under these rafters tonight. Whisper it with me, romantic. Is it the Latin lover who struts his stuff across the Spanish square, who sees delicious curves and immediately aims to carve out a slice of that lady's heart, to send sensation shivers into her ear, her tongue, letting his language languish until she cries for him alone at dawn? <laughs> or maybe when you hear that word romantic, you imagine a book, a bodice ripper, its cover adorned with Fabio's fabulous locks, exposed ribbed silk shirt ripped across his chest, the gleam of pecs slicked with sweat. Or you may nestle in your favorite lazy chair, remote in hand, spooning haagen wondering why your nights are not like Carrie Bradshaw's, why each time you walk into a bar, another man with a chiseled chin isn't there why your nights are not spent bantering with Mr. Big. <laughs> to leave the minivans, the strollers, cranky coworkers, soccer fields, nights filled with Chuck E. Cheese and children's pointy-hatted birthday parties all behind. To become in some alternate parallel universe the vixen who caresses more men or women than even Gaga could land to shop Madison Avenue for shoes, your calves shaped just so by those three grand Manolo Bolonics and a Prada handbag. Or perhaps you're a man. Romance, what's that? Why plumb a novel's heat when a six pack chips and dip in a night in front of the internet would do just as well. The screen flickers, the shimmer of skin, groans, grunts, moans, you'd swear were real. Yet with each scroll, each finger click, each and every airbrushed babe that flashes past your conscience pricks. Is this romance? Not so much. It takes two to dance. Now you glide across the sultry dance floor. A couple press chest to chest, her dress low cut, breasts mostly exposed, cut to that suave man in his cashmere suit. The rhythm pulses. Claves, maracas, marimbas, slides, twists, whirls. Her red dress flaring with each elegant Argentinian turn. Bodies rolling, sultry, pulling, pulsating. Necks beating in the equatorial heat. But what happens when one partner decides to no longer dance this dance? When she or he decides the time is right to leave, to tango alone or more frightening still with someone else, and there we are, left partnerless. This is how I learned what it means to really be a romantic. The romantic in truth is one whose eye is always drawn to whatever it is that's missing. To constantly want to dance with a partner different than whichever one I've got, like that ideal creature some other dude has or the lost lover I would have, could have, should have made it work with in some fuzzy pictured past. But never, no, not ever, that flesh and blood woman who stands before me now, who wants to love me in this presence. The romantic is an egoic poet whose favorite lyric is grief. The romantic is John Keats pining that the nightingale's beauty sits not long in the tree that its melody lasts only a moment. He cannot gratify the song while it is here, but only when it's gone, when it has flown dark winged to some other hill. The notes sound most poignantly from wherever they are not. The Enneagram gives the romantic a chance to stop this dynamic, to see his worn out story of lost glories, lost love, lost life for what it is, while it unspools still from the tape reel onto the mind's white screen. He sees the tale he tells himself is not the truth. The Enneagram offers awareness of what the ego 
is up to. It allows the romantic to write a poem that is new. So I wrote the poem that follows um, during a drive I took not that long ago on a Deschutes County Road one winter with thoughts like these in my mind. Crossing that open country where mountains row up like chorus girls, they each stood large on my road. This one sheer, the next cragged, the next slim bottomed, another broad faced, another red topped, an elegant plump. With each curve I traversed, skirting the troublesome faces and giving wide berth to knife edges, admiring wild legs and canyons, the wind shifted. Cloud boas dangled from fur shoulders, then fluttered off feather white. And I was 12 again, stiff with the prospect of the slow dance and the cold sweat that accompanied palms at basement parties, cupped around a bony waist. Revelation happens like that in burlesque moments, a grope for contact we want but are afraid to touch. Then I knew it. Like my Ford pickups ripped upholstery, how as night dropped its black negligee, somewhere in the distance, another would queue up, waiting to dance. Thank you.